Hi, third graders. Today is Friday, May 15th, and we will be doing our last lesson for chapter 15 today. So I'm going to scroll down here to Friday, and our goal for today is I can show what I've learned about measuring length, weight, and capacity. And then as you can see here, we have our chapter 15 assessment. But before we look at that, I want to review quickly all these things that we learned about, because we've learned about a lot. So I'm going to take us over here. And before I talk about everything that we've already learned, I wanted to talk again about gallons because I didn't do too much with gallons the other day on Wednesday. So remember a gallon, this is my gallon of milk. And if you buy large amounts of water or milk, you might buy it in gallons. It'll always tell you my it says one gallon right down there. So it'll always tell you how much is in it. So with gallons, gallons are used to measure the capacity of large containers. And the abbreviation for gallons is G-A-L. And four quarts is equal to one gallon. So if you remember on Wednesday, this is my quart container. So four of these go into one gallon. That's a lot. Lots of liquid. So, how many pints are in one gallon? Hmm. Let's think back on Wednesday. This is my pint. How many of these fit in here? Does anyone remember? Two of these, two of my pints fit into a quart. So, two pints in one quart and four quarts in one gallon. So, let's think about that and try and use some paper and pencil. Think about how many pints are in one gallon. I'm going to figure it out using these here, these pictures, because here each of these is one quart, but it tells me here here's one pint, and then remember because there's two pints in one quart, this one quart is also two pints. So I'm going to count here. One pint, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight pints in one gallon. Eight of these in a gallon. That's a lot. All right, next question. How many cups are in one gallon? Remember, this is my measuring cup. Yours might look a little different, but this is what I have to use. How many cups are in one gallon? Now I have to think back even further. How many cups were in one pint? One, two, two cups in one pint. And then how many pints in one gallon? So there are eight pints in one gallon and there's two cups per pint. So how many pints does that give me per gallon? Or how many cups does that give me per gallon? I think I said pints, I'm sorry. <laughs> we already know pints. We have 16 cups per gallon. Good job. Those are tricky. So we're gonna go over some of the vocabulary that we've learned the last two weeks. First of all, cup is a customary unit for measuring capacity of small containers. And then a pint a customary unit of measuring capacity for small containers, also two cups in one pint. The next one is a quart, and that is a customary unit for measuring larger containers. Remember there's four cups in one quart and two pints in one quart. And our last word is gallon, last word for this slide. Remember this is my gallon, a customary unit for measuring capacity of large containers. And remember that capacity is how much can fit in a container. So what is the capacity of this milk jug? One gallon is the capacity of this. And here's a nice little picture converting how much can fit into one gallon. Okay, ounces. So remember last week when I had my little weight, we talked about ounces, and ounces are a customary unit for measuring weight of light objects. 
A pound is a customary unit of measuring weight of heavy objects. So remember an ounce is something you would use to measure a pencil or a strawberry. And I used pounds to measure my bigger plant. I would use pounds to measure my dog and to measure myself. And then a ton is a customary unit for measuring weight of very heavy objects. Remember one ton is about the weight of one car. That's really heavy. Okay, and then an inch. So if you have a ruler here, one inch on a ruler is a way of measuring short lengths like a paper clip. Half an inch is the halfway point between two inches. So here's our one inch, here's our two inch, and this blue line in the middle is half. So if something came to here, it would be one and a half inches long. And then a quarter inch is one fourth of an inch. So here is our zero inches and this line here is our one inch. So if we were to split this distance up into four, right here is our one fourth or one quarter inch. Three quarter inch is three fourths of an inch. So in this one, we have our three and our four inches here and it's a smaller scale, so it's harder to see. But this longer line is our halfway point and this line here is our three fourths point. Okay, one foot is 12 inches. It is the length of a ruler. This is one foot long. And that is a customary unit for measuring longer lengths. One yard, who remembers how many feet one yard is? Three feet is one yard. And I brought my yardstick too. It's very long. And Three feet or one yard is how many inches? 36 inches. And a yard is a customary unit for measuring long lengths and short distances. A mile is a customary unit for measuring distance. I can't show you a mile in my hands, it's way too big. But down here we have that picture, remember, that goes all the way around a block and that is one mile. We need to use miles to measure the distance you might drive or bike or even walk. And then a ruler is a straight strip marked at regular intervals to use to draw straight lines or to measure. Okay, and that is our all of the vocab. So that's everything we've done the last two weeks. And now Let's go look at the assessment that we have for today. So here you can find this on Seesaw. It is also on Clever, on the link on Clever. So we have some multiple choice answers. Find the length of the scissors to the nearest half inch. What is the best estimate of the height of a third grader? So you have to think about what unit would be best. Measuring the length of a leaf. What objects weigh more than one pound? and then two or one question here and you have some space to work on this page too and you can always do it on paper and pencil also if that's easier for you than on the computer so i want you to try your best to do this independently that means on your own if you have a question about what something means you can ask a family member a sibling or a parent maybe but if but you don't want them to give you the answer. I want you to try and find the answer on your own, okay? I want to see how much you know, because I know you all know a lot. So third graders, I hope you have a fantastic Friday. Today is my last lesson. I will be in a meeting with you all on Wednesday, but that will be my last day. I'm graduating soon, so I will be done here. I've had so much fun teaching you and sending you all these lessons. I wish I could have met you all in person. I was really sad about that, but this has been also very fun for me. So I hope that you have enjoyed the lessons I've taught you, and I hope you didn't miss Miss Becker too much, <laughs> but I'm excited to see your work for this week, and I can't wait to see you all on the Zoom on Wednesday. Have a great Friday, third graders, and a great weekend. Bye.